Chamberlain, and I'll be your host tonight. I'd love to introduce the crew to you. First off, we have Mr. Donald Culp from Columbus, Ohio. Hello, everybody. And then we have Chris Ray up in Connecticut, just down the street from me a little ways. Hello. And then it's back to Brooklyn with the bullets whizzing around and the no grain elevators and traffic lights and traffic jams and just general insanity. If there's a subject you would like to have taught, you'd like to have one of us share on it right there will be an email address and it will be don at tltf.org and you can send me an email explaining what it is you want taught and we'll see if one of us can't tackle it for you and uh that's what we're here for here to do teach the word so right there don at tltf.org Okay, now, Michael Lewis was supposed to teach tonight, uh, and his father passed away the other day um, on Sunday, uh, either Saturday or Sunday, I don't remember which it is. Um, so I'm going to quickly say a quick little prayer for Mike and, uh, and his wife, Dana, and then we'll get into the teaching. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for Mike Lewis, for his great stand on your word. And I thank you that he's just a great example to all of us. And I thank you for him comforting his heart and for you to just be there with his family. Because the hope is that he will see his dad again. And he knows that that will happen. And we know that it will happen. And I thank you for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Um, as I've told you before, there is one thing I really enjoy doing. And that's sitting down with um, a chapter in the Old Testament and just going through it with you. So, let's see here. We're going to Daniel chapter 10. Now, I have taught on prayer many times here. And this gets into a lot to do with, there's so much information on so many different subjects in this chapter. It is just plump. I mean, we could teach this for two or three weeks and still not cover it all. But I'm going to go through it a little bit tonight with you. And to understand Daniel, you're going to have to understand that back a few years before Daniel was born, there was this king. And this king just thumbed his nose at God. You know, meh. And it got so, this was the most terrible king that Israel ever had, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but I think this was the most terrible king that Israel ever had. And God told Jer the prophet Jeremiah, he, he, who was in jail at the time, to tell the king that, you know, if you don't straighten up and fly right, you're going to get taken over so the king promptly took the scroll that uh jeremiah had sent him and cut it up into pieces and threw it into the fire showing complete and total disrespect for god so you know that doesn't stop god god said to jeremiah hey we got to do this again so Jeremiah called him his scribe and he, you know, quoted it all out to him and he wrote it down and they took it to the king again. And the king promptly ignored it again. And a few years later, or a few months later, I, I don't recall, but I should have gone over all of this information, but I didn't. 
uh, a little while later, that's exactly what happened. Nebuchadnezzar came into Israel with his troops. He defeated Israel and he took the entire country prisoner. And he moved them out from where they were. And he spread them all over the, uh, all around that area of the Mediterranean, uh, Nebuchadnezzar dropped off people. And then he took people from those places and sent them back and had them live in that area of Israel where um, they had taken the prisoners from. That's how you, that's, that was one way to wipe out a country. But that always failed because you see, they believed at the time all gods were local. So they started worshiping the true God, God of Abraham. And well, I'm getting too much into that story and not enough into this one. So let's start up here. Um, oh, and uh, I believe Daniel had in the previous chapter a vision that they would be in captivity for 70 years. And guess what? They were in captivity for 70 years and then the king let them go. All right, so let's, but I want to show you some very specific things. There's a lot in here about revelation and revelation knowledge and how it works. So it says in Daniel 10.1, in the third year of Cyrus the king of Persia, a revelation was given unto Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. I guess that's where they got the name. Because uh, Daniel became the head of the wise men, the, the head of the, um, the people who studied the stars. And uh, that's, I think, where they get the name. There's no truth to any of that thing about the three wise men, so don't worry about it. Okay, so he, they had called him Balthazar. Its message was true, and it came, and it concerned a great war. Now that word war, let's click on that little figure there, and it'll take us down to the bottom of the page. It means or true, true and burdensome. Okay, so let's go back and look at what the word was. A true and burdensome war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. In other words, he was sitting there one day and God gave him this vision. At that time, Daniel mourned for three weeks. Now that word mourned, I want to show you a little bit about it. That's the uh, Hebrew word, and there's three occurrences of it. There is here, and then in 1 Samuel, and in uh, <coughs> Ezra. Now, this word, mourn, it's a verb. It's transliteration is a ball, a ball, short definition, mourn. But I want to show you some more stuff about this, how it was translated, because that tells you a little bit more about this word. Let me bring up the other one. Okay, this is the King James Version. What I was reading from was the... Um, NIV. In the third year, Cyrus, the king of Persia, the thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Balthazar, and, and the thing was true. But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and the understanding of the vision. And in those days, Daniel was mourning. Okay, let's look at that one. Okay. I like the letter because it tells you how it was translated. 
to mourn, to lament. Uh, Uh, to cause to mourn. Let's see, where is it? See, this is all just sounding like it's he's he's mourning. You know, why would you be mourning? And it's not really because he was mourning. It was because he was concerned about what this message meant. Let's go back here. He had this vision and he, there's two things you get when you get a vision, well, when you get revelation. The first is word of knowledge. Somehow God communicates something to you. Um, tells me that, call Chris. She needs to talk to somebody. So. Uh, Chris has got something going on, and uh, you need to go talk to her. Chris has something going on, is word of knowledge. You got to call her on the phone, is word of wisdom, telling you what to do with that information. Now, he may tell me specifics, he may not, but he did say to go call Chris. So I go over to the phone, pick it up, and I call Chris immediately. And I mean, I've seen this happen so many times where God just, it, can it be a you know full vision movie type thing? Yes, it can be. But it all, not God doesn't work that way with everybody. I know he did with Peter because Peter had a big, huge vision. I know he did with Daniel. Daniel right here, he had this big, huge vision. But there are people who I know who've never had a vision, but they've they went into a situation and there was information they needed and God got it to them. It comes from a sense of knowing. All right, I'm not gonna get too deep into that because that's a big long teaching that I'm not qualified to teach yet, I don't think. And at that time, Daniel was concerned over this for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat, no wine, touched, no wine touched my lips and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Now this is 21 days. And basically this is the fast. Daniel was on a fast. He wasn't gonna eat or drink or do anything until he got the word of wisdom as to what to do about what the knowledge he was given what to do with it. Now, I have been on, a, I don't know if any of you have fasted, I've done a three-day fast. And that was quite challenging. Not eating anything. I could have water or juice, one, go, one glass of orange juice a day for those three days. And, you know, if water, because you need to have water to purify your system get all rid of all the poisons so this is what daniel's doing he's very concerned about this vision that he had okay verse four on the 24th day of the of the first month as i was standing at the bank of the great river tigris i looked up and before me, there was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Upaz. Uh, by the way, this, this section right here, the gold from Upaz, that was supposed to be the finest gold of its time. It was the most pure gold. It was just like an awesome thing. You know, people would get lost in a trance looking at it and he had this belt of this gold around his waist and his body was like topaz and his face like lightning and his eyes like flaming torches his arms and legs were gleamed and burnished with bronze and his voice like the sound of a multitude have you ever 
seen that where somebody spoke and it was like the voice of a multitude. There are a lot of great speakers around. And, you know, they make money going around doing seminars and teaching people various things. But they have a voice that really just grabs you. And you sit there and you remember, I mean, I've sat through a couple of these things. I had some great teachers along the way in the last 40 years. And there were a couple of people who were just mesmerizing. And you, you, would, you just couldn't take your attention away from them. And there's, Jesus Christ, of course, was the guy who had the voice with the sound of the multitude. I mean, look at what happened with him. Thousands of people were believing on him. Now, it wasn't a deep commitment, but, you know, they'd hear him and they'd just be mesmerized by him. Or not mesmer, that's a bad word, I suppose. It, he got their attention. And there was one time, it happened at Gethsemane, of all places. Um, the guards asked, who is Jesus, uh, who's Jesus of Galilee? And he said, I am. And they fell down. That's how powerful he was at that point. He'd been praying all night. And he just said, I am, and it knocked them down. Can you imagine that? They're, these are, you know, big guys in the army. You know, they're armed to the teeth. And he says, I am, and they all fall backwards. That's a pretty amazing thing to think about. Okay, in verse 7, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. Now, this seems to happen a lot when guys get visions. When Paul had his vision on the way from to going to, um, oh, where was it? They were, when he got saved. Um, Either you two remember Acts 9? Is it Damascus? Damascus. Damascus. Yeah, thank you. There you go. I'm getting old. My memory is just not what it used to be. I should write this stuff all down. Paul's on his way to Damascus, and he sees a vision. And he falls to the ground, and the two guards who are with him, the two guys who are with him who are Romans, I guess, or something, you know, I believe they were Romans, and they fell, and they, they heard a voice. They didn't understand it because it was Aramaic. Paul knew Aramaic, so he understood it, what that was saying. But, you know, these voices happened, and people just followed the, the power involved. You know, it, it is just almost incomprehensible sometimes, that power of God at, you know, in full swing going, and somebody speaks, and boom, everybody goes down. All right. He was the only one seeing the vision, and the others just fled and hid themselves. So he was left there alone, gazing at this great vision, but he had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep I fell deep I fell into a deep sleep, my face on the ground. In other words, he went down, prostrate. You know, he's just it's like, you know, your senses were over his senses were overloaded. They shut down. A hand touched me and set my me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said, Daniel, you are highly esteemed and considered, care considered carefully the words I am about to speak to you. And stand up, for I have been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood 
up trembling. Now, that's an interesting thing. This guy who he's seeing says he was sent to Daniel. And if you keep studying the Bible, you're going to find out a lot of things happen this way. That God sends angels into a situation to help. And those angels, you know, we keep thinking uh, every revelation is a vision. It's not. Sometimes it's an angel whispering in your ear. Okay, then I heard them speaking and I listened to him and fell in. Okay, verse 10, and he touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, who you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. And he con then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. There you go, angel school. First thing you say, don't be afraid. You can go through the Bible and every time something like this happens, the first words that come out are, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, whoops. Don't be afraid. The first thing you hear from the angels. What did Gabriel say to Mary? Be not afraid. What did God say to uh, Joshua? Be not afraid. It's all through the Bible. When we're dealing with God, he doesn't want us to be afraid. He want, does he want us to respect then yes, he does. That's the kind of fear that's talking about, the showing God the respect that he's the creator of the heavens and the universe, and you know you ain't. <laughs> Verse 15, while he was saying this to me, I bowed my face toward the ground and was speechless. Then one who looked at me like a man, the... Uh, then one who looked like a man touched my lips and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said the one I said to one standing the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision of my Lord, and I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. Wow. That is being sold out to God. What you are anticipating an answer from him and you can't even breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid. There it is again. You who are highly esteemed. He said, peace, be strong. Now be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me the strength. Now, here's this is an interesting thing. If you hang around here, you're going to hear us talking about when you pray, ask for angels. Well, why not? What are they doing? According to Hebrews, they're servants for, to help us with the things that we're doing for God. They're sent to help us. This is exactly what it's talking about. Again, the one who looks like a man to be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and I said, speak my Lord, since you've given me strength. And he said, so he said, do you know why I've come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. Oh, yeah, I, I missed that part. Let's go back up here. Um, where's that thing about the prince of Persia? I'm going to go over to the King James Version. 
It's verse, it's verse 12. Verse 12. Thank you, Don. I missed it somehow. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. Right, that's what I was looking for. Since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persia, the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained with the king of Persia. Now, <laughs> you'll hear us say all gods are local. I've said it once tonight already. These spirits, there were spirits assigned to various parts of the world, which is why some parts are so evil. Or such evil has come out of them. Look at Germany in the in the 20th century. Two wars, hundreds of millions of people dead. It's because the a spirit that was in that region was very evil, and he caused a lot of this havoc to happen. That's why there's certain areas where there, nothing bad seems to happen because the spirits aren't as evil they're, or they're good spirits actually and these spirits are called gods so when those people i was talking about who got sent all over the mediterranean and they brought the other people back and put them into that area all gods are local, so they started worshiping the true God by accident. I mean, they didn't want to tick off the local God. And that just happened to be the God of Abraham in that area. And they became known as half-Jews, and the Jews really hated them. They hated them with a passion because they didn't think they were as good as they were that you know they had, the way they came about being um Jews was you know they were, there was no bloodline and that's what the 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 Judeans thought it was all about the bloodline that went from Abraham down they could trace their lineage all the way back to Abraham and they thought they were saved because of that. Never understanding that the truth was, it wasn't the bloodline that was important. The children of Abraham are those who live by faith. It says so a lot of places. And they missed the boat. That's, that's exactly what happened to all the heads of the temple. The ones who wanted Jesus Christ dead, they all thought they were saved because they could trace their lineage back to Abraham. So they would be saved because they were Abraham's seed. But you know something that says the, in the word that God could raise up, take rocks and raise up seed to Abraham with those. We are the seed of Abraham. Those of us who believe the word, we just take that word that we learn and hold it in our hearts <coughs> just like don was talking about in his teaching you learn the word you put it in your heart and you believe it and live it all right let's see here and the king it says here the king of persia had withstood this guy now look at look at the rest of the stuff about this guy He's ripped. His muscles have muscles. And the king of Persia is going to stop this guy? John Lynn gives a great example in um, One Day with the Creator. I would hate to have to fight Mike Tyson. But at least Mike Tyson I can see. These spirits, you don't see them. They're there in a, in a spiritual realm. 
And unless you are given a vision by God, you won't see them. So they could sneak up and bash you right in the head without you ever even knowing they were there. So this wasn't any, this was not a physical person. This was a spirit that is being talked about here. Okay, but the prince of Persia, the Persian kingdom, resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, Michael is the archangel. He, there is nobody higher in heaven except for God. At least that's my understanding. Nobody outranks Michael except God. Michael is in charge of fighting for God's people. He and his angels come down. And when there's a spirit, you know, I know you guys don't see it happening. You don't see the spiritual battle. But there's a spiritual battle going on around us all the time, every single day. And it's the devil vying for your worship and God vying for your worship. And you're the one who decides who gets your worship. God's been very upfront, out front and plain in his word. The devil does everything by stealth. And if you're not worshiping the true God, then you're worshiping the devil. I don't care what you... What you want to say, if you are not worshiping the true God, you are worshiping the devil. All right, let's come back down here and finish this out. Verse 20, so he said, do you know why I've come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against my supports me against them except Michael, your prince. And then you can go into the next chapter and subject changes right away. You never I don't know if you ever quite hear exactly what this was all about, but you can see there's a lot of principles here. There's a principle of prayer. There's a principle of, you know, listening to God. There's a principle of putting aside everything that gets, tries to get in the way. The fast. Anything that gets in the way of you and God should be pushed to the side. If it's whatever it is. I'm an alcoholic. Drinking for me was one of the things I had to push aside. I have to keep it pushed to the side and never let it happen again. Because it's vying for my attention. Smoking, I don't even want to go back to cigarettes. After I quit, I can't even stand to be near them. But I don't tell other people to quit because then you're self-righteous and I'm not self-righteous. <laughs> So, in any case, there we go. Oh, whoops. My head kind of vanished. There we go. Like I said, I was pounding on the table. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we can keep you foremost in our thoughts. That we can keep you foremost in everything we do. And I just thank you, Father, that you're there for us. And I thank you that you're willing to send those angels in when they're necessary. I mean, they're there to help us. It says so in Hebrews. So I just thank you that we can boldly ask you, Lord, send an angel in. And help fight for me so I can get your word done here. And I just thank you that we can do that at all times and in all places. And I thank you, Father, for just blessing us and watching over us tonight. In your son's name, amen. Okay, guys, you can unmute yourselves. Now, as I say every week, you are going away. 
we are staying right here. And we're going to do the uh, green room or fellowship after hours. So we'll see you. Thank you.